Okay, let me just uh, reset my STF here and see how my image is turning out. And oh my gosh. All right, let's not panic. Let's clear up some misconceptions about STF. Welcome to SETI Astro. Okay, I have the green channel of one of my images here. And I want to demonstrate how as we do the initial manipulations of the image, the actual histogram changes as the image quality improves. And subsequently, the STF seems to degrade over time. And I think this is where a lot of people get hung up as to what the STF is actually doing and starts reading way too much into, into the STF. So we'll start with uh, a mono image here, and we'll uh, eventually look at some colored stuff, but let's go ahead and look. First we have a my, my initial master, stars and all, and I have the GHS script up here, just because it can give us a nice log histogram, so we can look at the shape. Then applying gradient correction, you can see it gets a little narrower again as to the improvement of the quality of the data, right? The, the sigma, the spread of the data is actually getting narrower. And then as we remove the stars, the spread gets even further reduced, right? All those little stars are gone, which tends to smear out our histogram to the right. And then applying noise exterminator, it gets very sharp. It's a very sharp peak in our histogram now as that noise spread, the sigma delta from the median, gets smashed right up against the median. So now we're left with a very tight set of data, essentially around where the median is. Now let's go ahead and just see how the STF handles all these scenarios. Currently, I have duplicated the STF onto all the images from the initial master. So they're all the same stretch on the screen. Removing the gradient and applying a stretch, items do get brighter. So the F STF is stretching a little bit harder, correlating to that narrower histogram. And then removing the stars, reapplying STF. Again, everything gets a little bit brighter and then now for the noiseless one after running noise X when you apply STF it just gets crazy looking and I think a lot of people get hung up on that and let's really look at what that's doing let's let's see the histogram that is getting developed by STF okay here's the reference documentation as to what's going on now it is going to be just a lot of math and we could let that wash over you if you're uh, not that mathematically inclined but the big piece of it is down in here this is what's doing the stretch this is actually just a mid-tones adjustment like if you had the histogram open and you grab that middle slider and shoved it over to the left to make it brighter that's the bulk of what STF is doing there's also a defined clipping function which sets the black point and uh, an expansion function that really tells how much to shift that uh, mid-tone slider over. And then for the STF itself, they develop this adaptive display function algorithm, which essentially is the piece that is sliding the mid-tone slider over to the left, how far to actually do that. Its goal is actually to try to get it to a median of 0.25 roughly and this clipping function of negative 2.8 really sets the black point at 2.8 sigma below the median and the developer one did give us just some pixel math in a condensed form that could be utilized in PixInsight and again you could see they're using these midtone transfer functions they're finding the medians of the particular image the B is the background value or where the target median is going to be. And again, these C's are the 
um, clipping point or the black point that's going to be established how far away from the median they're going to set the black point in, in units of sigma. So what does all that really tell us? What it tells us is on a nice fat histogram hump like this, it's going to set the black point roughly here. It's going to take the big peak here and set that to 0.25 and just do a nice stretch on it. If you have really good quality data or you run noise exterminator and now it has a very low noise value, you can see just how tight this histogram is and it's going to set the black point extremely close to the Beanian value and it's just going to stretch the heck out of it in order to fill the histogram from 0 to 0.25 to fill, fill that out. So let's go ahead and run the math on those stretches and see what it looks like. So I went ahead and ran the pixel math, which would be the exact same as if you did the STF and dragged the little triangle down to your histogram transfer function and then moved it over to the, to the image. It, it does the same thing. But I do have the histogram displayed here. And you can see that on the initial master image, we get a, a nice stretch of a, of a hump of a histogram but it looks pretty darn close to the same one that got created on the noiseless version. So what it's really trying to do is stretch out that histogram to have a black point still at zero, a median value of about 0.25, and it's all stretched according to that. So if you have a very narrow, high quality data set with very little sigma noise variance in it, a very tight histogram, your STF is going to give you one of these crazier stretches. Or if you have just a, a normal non-denoised image full of stars, it does the normal stretch that you'd expect. So that's really why STF sometimes just gives you weird looking images. And a lot of people get hung up on that view. And you shouldn't. You have great data then. It's a very small, tight no variation in the histogram that STF is just stretching the hell out of for display purposes. So besides overstretching, let's look at some other pitfalls of STF that you don't want to fall into. Here's an RGB image of the Pinwheel Galaxy. And let's go ahead and uh, just run through normal color calibration. We're just going to do background neutralization and color calibration on this. Uh, nothing fancy. Here's our background neutralization. I have an STF currently applied. We'll go ahead and put the background preview in the region of interest. And then we're going to go ahead and do the color calibration. Same uh, background region of interest. And then for the white region, we're going to use the core of the galaxy. No structure detection since there's no stars. Okay, and it still looks green then you may be going, well, that's not right. And okay, we'll reset the STF and hit the nuclear button again. And it's still looking green. And you may be wondering how your color calibration is not functioning correctly. And in truth, it worked as intended. And if you really look close at the STF, I was running it in an unlinked mode. So all it did was look separately at the R, G, and B channels and applied the STF individually to each one of those without regard to the other channels. So after color calibration, it's important you have a, a linked STF. Now just rerunning STF, now it looks great. Now you have a nice white galaxy and a fairly neutral background there. So this linked unlinked thing, you could easily fall into uh, the trap of that where it's displaying what looks weird but it really isn't. And a lot of the time people get hung up on just how this STF looks. And again, it's just for display purposes. It doesn't have any, I mean, you could take these sliders and do all wonky stuff with them and it doesn't actually display or it doesn't change the image one little bit. It's all those other things you did to it, the background neutralization, the color calibration. Those are the true things that did the changes to the image. 
The last thing, just to drive home the the point that STF really is just is just a display; it doesn't do anything. I'm going to uh, run STF on a clone of the image uh, that I've run noise exterminator on versus no noise exterminator, and then stretch them exactly the same way in hyperbolic process, such that uh, we could really see what the what the true difference is. So here's the STF for no noise exterminator, and here's the one with noise exterminator on. As you can see, the STF is just, again, all, all overstretched. It's just completely overstretched. It's weirdly green, um, all, all sorts of stuff with it. Now let's just go ahead and we'll stretch the one and apply that same exact stretch to the other. This won't be a full tutorial on GHS. I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch the image that didn't have noise exterminator done to it. Then process up those steps in a container and drop it on the one with noise exterminator. And we'll see that there isn't anything weird going on at all. Here's our nonlinear stretched galaxy. And let's go ahead and apply these same exact stretches now to the one where we ran Noise Exterminator. So here's all the history for our GHS. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off into a process container. If we open the process container, we don't need those color calibrations. We just want the GHS stretches. And we're gonna go ahead and drop that right onto the one with the Noise Exterminator in the extreme STF stretch. Okay, it's done. STF is still applied, so we need to unapply that, and there it is. Now we can directly compare them. And there's nothing besides the noise being gone. It was just really the, the weird stretch in the STF. There's nothing crazy in the background, nothing like that. Well, if you've made it in my video this far, uh, you get the sneak preview. I am working on a st statistical stretch model that'll dynamically analyze the image and stretch it accordingly, similar to what STF is doing, but in a much more robust fashion. Uh, I'm going to set the, the target median here to 0.16 and I'm going to run it on both the, the noisy and the noiseless versions and uh, you'll see that it is a much more controlled stretch as it is uh, actually modeling the statistics much better within the images for those people that like using uh, STF type stretch as their initial stretch. So I'll run it on image 34 and 34 with the noise exterminator here. All right, there is the noisy one, and let's go to the one with noise X on it, that STF way overstretched, and we'll let a statistical stretch here uh, handle it. Okay, and it's done. Now we can see the two images here. There's the one uh, with the noise exterminator applied, and here's the one without the noise exterminator applied. Yes, it does stretch it harder, but it is a much more controlled and um, methodical method of doing a stretch, including some other functionality in there um, as I'm furthering development of it. But if you would like uh, the beta copy of it, it is on my uh, PixInsight scripts portion of my website. Well, I hope this cleared up confusion around STF. Please comment, like, and subscribe.